Hey guys, welcome to the School of Pool. Today's tutorial, we're going to be going over a masse or spin shot, and we're going to show you why you want to use it and how you're going to do it. So getting right into it, here's an example of a longer shot, and this is when you would really use a shot in a match. So if your opponent's balls are blocking the five ball in the corner, then obviously you don't have a clear shot. So your options are either to kick it, which sometimes they may not be available, as you'll see here, we can basically just show you that if there's a ball in front of your object ball or the rail that you need to hit in the spot, then obviously a kick isn't going to be the best shot for the situation. So not getting too into detail yet, but just as an example, we're going to basically just curve around that 14 ball. We're putting a little bit of right on it, and we're going to spin that cue ball around the 14 so we can get down there and pocket that three ball. Up next, we have a shorter shot example, but it's the same situation. So obviously, if you're on the other side of the 11 there and you can't get to your 5, then unless you don't have anything in the way, you might want to kick it. But if you have something in the way, either in front of the ball or the rail, this is probably a better shot. So right here, we're going to just line up on top of the ball, and for a short shot, we're hitting on top. But always remember to chalk up, because you're never going to make a Massey shot unless your stick is fully chalked. It'll just slip right off the ball. So getting on top, we're sitting on the table here to get a good leverage on the ball and just pushing through and pocketing that five ball. So before we get into how to actually hit the cue ball, we got to go over hand placement. Your hand placement's important. You want to have a nice, strong, straight hand. And like we've been saying, you're going to want that leverage and that be up on top of the ball. So sometimes you even have to throw your leg up on the rail or sit on the rail of the table so you can get real good leverage on that shot. Now, where to actually hit the cue ball. So for a longer shot like this, you're going to be hitting the cue ball high, but even higher than you normally would just for a follow through shot. You're going to want to have a little angle to your stick, about 45 degrees, but it really just comes down to how the shot is that you need to make and how much spin you need. You'll feel that out as you practice. So you're going to want to hit the side that you want to spin to. So if you want to go to the right, you're going to aim to the right and it's going to make it go that way. And if you want to go to the left, obviously you're going to hit it to the left and it's going to cause that cue ball to spin out to the left side. How high to the side and how hard you shoot is what's going to all affect your shots. This just comes with practice. And make sure that you push through on all of your shots because without pushing through, you're just going to chop the ball and it's going to die out. So if you don't follow through, you actually want to hit all the way down to the table and that's what's going to cause that cue ball to spin. Now for the shorter shot. This shot, you actually want to get over top of the cue ball. You're more focused on backspin to make the ball spin back towards the rail. So a little drill I like to do is you don't really need to worry about making the ball, but you want to try to just curve it back into the rail. Now you can see on that last shot that the cue ball didn't really go back towards the rail. That was because I was not chalked up because I was rushing to make this video. So now that we're chalked up, you can see there is much more spin to that ball. So that's the difference right there, a good example of how much chalk really does for these type of shots. So here, you're going to want to aim more out to the, to the left of the ball. So after we chalk up again, you'll see here that basically you want to just shoot out to the left and curve back into the 8, kind of like you saw in those example shots. So if the whole problem is, is if you try to just skip right around that 11 and hook it, you're going to hit it most of the time. And obviously that's the worst thing you want to do is give an opponent ball in hand. So you definitely want to shoot out far to the left and you're going to just suck the ball back. Because if not, that's what's going to happen. You're going to hit that 11 like I said. So now for the real shot. As you can see, spun right around there and made the ball. So here's just a couple other example shots. This is a side pocket shot that we did just to show you how many different applications this could have. One more here. And you notice how that ball hit the inside rail. Now look at this shot too. You want to actually use the rail if you can. So if anything, put more spin on it. So you hit that rail, it's going to reduce your chances of scratching and you're going to have a much bigger area to aim. Here's another example. This could have been an easy scratch if it was a straight on shot, but that rail saved it. Nice side shot. And this is another big topic, is how much are you covered? If you can see here, the 11 is only about half covering that shot. So with a shot like this, we always believe that a masse is a much higher percentage than a kick in this situation. Now, if the 11 was fully covering and we had to do a full spin around shot, then that might be something where you want to consider a kick over a masse. 
the number one most important thing on how to get this shot down is just practice. All the blueprints in this video pretty much have been laid out for you. Now just keep practicing and you will get it down eventually. We'd really appreciate it if you guys like this video, if you could subscribe. We just started out and we're trying to just build our channel up so we can keep bringing you more tips.